Welcome to the Vinyl Siding Institute's training video on installing vinyl siding. This video provides demonstrations of techniques that should be used in the field when installing vinyl siding, trim, soffit, and fascia. In this section, we'll cover wall preparation, fasteners, fastening techniques, tools, chalk lines, corner posts, and starter strips. Vinyl siding is an exterior cladding for existing structural walls. It should always be applied over some type of backer board, never to uncovered stud walls. In new construction projects, OSB or plywood is commonly used. In some areas, it's acceptable to use a solid foam board as backer board. In this case, siding must always be nailed directly into the framing stud or furring, unless the manufacturer's instructions provide different fastening methods. Walls should be covered with a water-resistive barrier, such as house wrap, roofing felt, or other products, if allowed by the building code. Use a water-resistive material to flash the inside and outside corners for a minimum of 10 inches on each side. Water-resistive materials include trim coil, roofing felt, or house wrap. In most residing projects, panels are attached to existing wood siding. To prepare the walls, nail down any loose boards and replace all rotten wood. Using foam backer board to level the wall surface is suggested. For all projects, remove protrusions, such as gutters and light fixtures. Before you apply anything to the walls, let's review fastener choices, fastening techniques, and tools. For fasteners, you can use aluminum, galvanized steel, or other corrosion-resistant nails, staples, or screws. There are several important rules to remember regarding proper fastening techniques. Unless otherwise indicated, nail in the middle of nail slots. Be sure to drive nails straight and level to prevent distortion and buckling of the panel. Make sure the fastener penetrates a minimum of three quarters of an inch into framing studs or furring, unless the manufacturer's instructions provide different fastening methods. Never nail tight, since vinyl siding panels expand and contract slightly when the weather changes and always leave a gap of approximately 1 32nd of an inch between the fastener head and the vinyl siding, or about the thickness of a dime. If a nail slot does not allow centering of the nail, use a nail hole slot punch to extend the nail slot. Common vinyl siding installation tools you will need include tin snips, a nail hole slot punch, a snap lock tool, and a zip lock tool. The next step in getting started is establishing chalk lines for the top of the starter strip which locks the first row of siding. Chalk lines can be located level with the lowest point to be sided or aligned with an existing soffit. Corner posts can be installed prior to the starter strip. Measure the length of the corner post needed so that it's one quarter inch short of the underside of the eave or soffit and extends three quarters of an inch below where the bottom of the starter strip will be located. Cut the top and bottom nailing hems so they're not visible after the siding is installed. Position a nail at the top of the uppermost slot on both sides of the corner post so the post will hang from the nails. This is one of the few times the nail goes at the top, not the middle, of the slot. Make sure to square the post while nailing. Continue nailing both sides of the corner post 8 to 12 inches apart in the center of the nail slots. Remember, drive nails straight and level and never nail tight. Leave a gap of approximately 1 32nd of an inch, about the thickness of a dime, between the fastener head and the corner post. Most vinyl siding manufacturers recommend using factory formed inside corner posts. Other options are to use single or double J channel. If more than one length of corner post is required, cut away one inch of the nailing flanges on the top piece. This top piece should overlap the bottom piece by three quarters of an inch, allowing one quarter inch for movement. In some situations, you will want to close off the bottom of the corner posts. This can be done by removing the bottom inch of the nail flange and channel from both sides of the post. Now, cut and bend the flaps to close off the post. You're now ready to install the starter strip. Align the top of the starter strip with the chalk line. Leave at least a quarter inch gap between adjacent pieces of starter strip and where the starter strip meets any corner post. Nail every 10 inches in the middle of the nailing slot. For backed siding, the starter strip must be spaced away from the wall to accommodate the thickness of the backing on the siding. 
consult the manufacturer's instructions for specific materials or techniques. In certain situations, such as when a wall changes elevation, it might be necessary to use J-channel as a starter strip. Be sure to drill a minimum of 3 16 of an inch weep holes no more than every 24 inches. To get more installation best practices and learn more about our certified products, visit VinylSighting.org.